Hello everyone, my name is Will Fatcher and welcome to Wrestlers Reunion Scotland's interview with my heroes. Our first interview this week is with Martin Gillett, or better known as Jackie Glitterboy Evans. Hello Martin, how are you doing? Yeah, not so bad, thank you Will. Absolutely you? brilliant. But I should have called you Jackie Glitterboy Evans. If you want to, lots of people <laughs> do, among other things. So where did you get the name from? Um, I used to, when I first started wrestling, I used to wrestle as Sailor Johnny Evans. Mm -hmm. Mainly because I had tattoos and uh, a little beard and that, you know. So yeah, Sailor Johnny Evans. And it, I turned into Jackie Evans, uh, to Johnny, just Johnny Evans. And then when I took on the persona of wrestling as a gay boy, I changed it slightly to Jackie because I thought, well, that's neither one nor the other, is it? <laughs> Which I, I didn't appear to be. <laughs> so why did you choose a gay character? Um, I was never a good enough wrestler to dazzle the audience with my skill. So I just I thought I'd better annoy them yeah. uh, to make them laugh and make them snigger and point and all that. So yeah, brilliant. That's a brilliant character. Reasons, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant character, but, uh, and of course, like that, in those days, it was uh, it was a done thing to shout at anyone that was gay. So, well, of course, it, it was. A, I mean, you know, you had that was the days of people like John Inman and Larry Grayson mm -hmm. and people like that who were put themselves up for fun, you know, and to make people laugh. So they yeah, seem to be doing all right at it. I missed those days. Well, I missed those days. So, yeah. so, how did you actually start in wrestling then? I, I wanted to wrestle since I was 12. And I used to watch it on the television with my dad. It's the only time that you've got the whole, the whole of the household in one room watching the same thing, you know. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. when I was 12, I, I really wanted to wrestle. And um, I used to get out there with my mates. We'd put our jumpers down like you do with goalposts. We'd make wrestling ring posts. And we'd have a go. And that, that worked well. You know, we were having great fun. Depending who we'd seen on the Saturday was who we were on the Sunday, you know, at our wrestling gigs in the local field. Oh, brilliant. And um, that was great until the football season started. And that was it. We just lost everybody then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my first time actually getting involved in, in the real thing was uh, on the fairgrounds. Um, I lived in Gloucester then, and uh, they used to have a fairground travel round for three, used to stay for three weeks every year at Gloucester Park. And they had the old uh, boxing and wrestling booths run by a well-known bloke called Ronnie Taylor. Mm -hmm. And um, I spent quite a bit of time over there over those three weeks. And I would have been about 14, 15, something like that. And, uh, Every person that stood up there, I put my hand up and I had a go. Uh, so I did okay. I managed to last three rounds, three three-minute rounds in one or ten bob note, 50p as it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I just kept doing that. Then after I'd been there three weeks, Ronnie came up to me. He said, you're always here, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, do you want to be a booth boy? And it sounded a bit iffy to me. I said, what's a booth boy? He said, you know, you stand up on the top and other people challenge you. So I'll give it a go. So that's what I did. It wasn't as much fun because while I was wrestling wrestlers, I was learning. Mm -hmm. But when I was up on the booth, it was just a case of, it was mainly drunks. People, you know, come out of the pub, wanted to impress their mates or their girlfriends or whatever. So I wasn't really learning anything. And it was just a case of, messing around with them for a couple of rounds and then just grab a load of them, spinning them around, throwing them in the corner and letting somebody else clear the mess up. So I, I wasn't really learning anything. Yeah. So was it not dangerous having uh, strangers that didn't know how to handle themselves in the ring? Dangerous yeah, it was. That? It was. But luckily, I mean, I was an old, old uh, wrestler by then because I'd been doing it for three weeks. <laughs> You, you know what it's like. You go into this game thinking, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to get a good idea. And I did many times, you know. And, uh, yeah, so that's how I started wrestling. 
then when uh, I traveled around with the fair for mm -hmm. a while, for about a year, um, then I went on to the sort of independent promotions. And that's when I started my persona, mm -hmm. then you see. Um, and I would work for all, anybody that would employ me. I would work for them. I, I would have wrestled in a phone box if they'd have employed me to do so. so uh, in was fact, that your full-time job then? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that's right. Um, in fact, a few promoters said to me, you, you don't need a promoter, you need a pimp. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, um, and then I gradually got to learn a bit more from, you know, because with wrestlers, they're always happy to pass on their skill. Yes. Uh -huh. And I found that regardless. doesn't matter what a person is like. If he's a wrestler, he will put you right. You know, pass on his skill. And it was great. So that's really what happened. Brilliant. So how long were you doing that full time? Full time, 12 years. So yeah. That's a long career. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So how are your knees? <laughs> They're totally gone now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm trying to do a bit of weeding in the garden today, and uh, I'm, I'm, I've got one of those things with the handles on. I kneel down. I need that to get up again. Otherwise, I'm going to roll across the lawn to the nearest tree to pull myself up. And it's, you know, the neighbours tend to think, you know, what have we got here? <laughs> uh, you, you, must, you must have some stories to tell. What, what, what in, in that area was yeah, yeah, the most amusing tale? Most amusing tale? Well, I think the most amusing one was uh, being a wrestler, a young lad, you know, it's a um, bit of a lad as we all were in them days. And uh, I was wrestling up in Yorkshire and I met up with this young lady. And uh, I bought her a drink and, you know, I was on coke because I was driving and I thought, well, I'll run her home, you know. And uh, afterwards, you know, I thought well, we get to know each other. Anyway, we stopped in a field. It was a bit of a slope. So we were down there, the usual dalliance, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you're young, your teachers and all that, and your parents, you know, they tell you what to do in these situations and what you shouldn't do. And it's better if you leave it till you're married. But nobody warns you about what to do when you put your bare bum on an electric fence. <laughs> So that was it. You know, we both had the shock of a lifetime. Got dressed, had a good laugh, sat back in the car. I ran her home. Uh, you know, I, I was going along the road after that, feeling that I could keep a tumble dryer and a hair dryer going for about an hour. <laughs> but it was good. It was good days. That's just uh, one of them. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, one of the things that I found out is that wrestlers have loads of stories. That, uh, yeah, they do. especially folk, folk on the road. You know, that, uh, mm. absolutely brilliant. So. Before you went into the wrestling ring, what was your, your pre-gig ritual? Um, I never had a, except putting my makeup on, I guess. was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I used to go through the same routine and put my makeup on, which loads of the old ladies would come along and say, I've bought you some mascara, dear. And, you know, and I used to go, oh, always loads of makeup for nothing, you know, because I just... Oh, just brilliant. How did the other wrestlers take that, sitting watching you putting your makeup on? Uh, they didn't really care, to be honest, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, as you know, the wrestling game is full of all sorts of characters. I was just another one that was on the bill that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who was your biggest influence then? Um, I think it was the ones I had I, I, respect, I think, rather than influence. And the list is endless. But if I were to be honest, from a skill point of view, I say, for my money, was George Kidd. Yeah. Who was superb. And if I was a tenth, if I had the tenth of the skill that he had, I wouldn't have needed a gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was fantastic to watch. Yeah. yeah. And then on the other one is um, Pat Roach. He oh, helped me Pat, yeah. a great deal in the early days he would keep us young ones on the straight and narrow there's mm -hmm. no doubt about that and when he said it you listen yeah you know uh i remember one thing he was very keen on if somebody asked for an autograph you gave it you know mm -hmm. they paid money to come and see this you get out there and give them an autograph you know and of course johnny kincaid mm -hmm. who to me was a wrestler's wrestler he was a 
you know, he, yeah, he, he was a typical all rounder and um, he was, a, and still is a great influence on me. Yeah. So those are my top three, I think. And you got to share a room with them in 2018, I heard. I did. And to be honest, the, the real cream on the cake was when he presented me with my award. Oh, super. That, that to man. me was priceless, you know. And he's a great guy to travel with, mm -hmm. you, as you know, you know. There's nobody in the wrestling game that doesn't know him. And, you know, I, I've never heard a bad word said about him, to be honest. Never heard a bad word. He's a great guy. Except when he refused to share a bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really funny. Um, I, I better tell it now, hadn't I? You had better tell um, it, yeah. We arrived, at, it, it, we were going to the Scottish reunion and we arrived in the hotel and uh, I booked two single beds in one room, you know. And uh, we get in there, it's a double bed. Me, I goes in to my persona. Him, this is not <laughs> happening, this is not happening. Straight out there to reception, they split the beds and everything. But I really played it for all it was worth. <laughs> I knew that's what they would do, but uh, you know, oh, you beast, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Don't be nasty, Johnny. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love little that one. I was glad I was there to hear it. <laughs> yeah. First hand. Yeah. But, uh, so, what was the dumbest way you were ever injured then? The dumbest being, it was me that was dumb. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, um, as most injuries are. There was five uh, I got knocked out five times in my career, and each time was by a woman at the ringside. <laughs> uh, one was a pint mug, because of course you could drink and yeah. smoke in the halls in them mm -hmm. days. Pint mug, big glass ashtray, a uh, couple of rolled up umbrellas, and the dreaded handbag. And it took me a while to learn how far you could push them. Yeah, I learned, learned it pretty quick when you come to think about it because, uh, you know, my life was depending on it. But yeah, that was the dumbest thing that ever happened. And that was pretty well the only major injuries I had. Yeah, I thought you'd have learned your lesson after your mum with her handbag when she took you as a kid because I read your biography. Oh, yeah, yeah, my own mother hit me with her handbag. <laughs> my own mother. I took her to the wrestling, you know. It's a night out, mother. Sit in the front row, got you a nice seat. What does she do? Hit me with her handbag. <laughs> Because he was, but probably had a training team behind her. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she'd been dying to do that for years to me. Oh, yeah. Mothers are like that, yeah. Mm. Oh, we've been beaten by the bell there, Martin. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much, Martin. That was absolutely brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And hopefully get to hear more from you later on in the season. But for those who can't wait, then... That's Martin's book in the background there, Confessions of a Wrestler by Martin Gillett. A great read. I would strongly recommend it. I'll put a link on uh, the posting to his Amazon page. It's full of laughs, jokes, and anyone who's got any interest in the wrestling profession at all will get a lot from it. Thank you very much for listening, folks, and thanks again, Martin. Martin.